News. We've just learned the House Ethics Committee is investigating and battled Congressman George Santos from New York. Speaker Kevin McCarthy affirming that just moments ago. Well, the one thing I've known is the questions have been arisen. The, the people of this district have voted for him in the uh, process. Um, ethics is moving through, and if ethics finds something, we'll take action. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're not allowing him to be on committee um, from the standpoint of the questions that have arisen. So ethics is actually investigating right now? Yes. All of this, of course, after Santos admitted to lying about much of his past and federal prosecutors are investigating his finances. It comes as dozens of his constituents are pulling into D.C. right now to demand Santos either resign or be removed. Long Island reporter Shante Lanz is on the bus traveling with them now and joins us live. Shante? Again, it's interesting that you said pulling in. We're less than 10 minutes away from Capitol Hill. We are pretty much here. We got on this bus around 7 a.m. There have been some naps. There have been some chants. But the mission is the same. Two groups came together. They have signatures, about 1,000 to 1,500, that they will hand deliver to Congressman Santos's office. They say they want him to step aside and step down based off of the web of lies, many of them he admitted to telling. This all happening right now. It's a culmination of seven weeks since the New York Times story first broke on December 19th. There have been rallies all over Long Island outside of his Queens District office. This is probably the second largest group to head out and to do something organized together. In fact, it's not just about uh, you know what the congressman did uh, according to these folks it's also the stories and why this all matters and right here it, we have some young people they're, they're not even old enough to vote two 17 year olds from Farmingdale High School I spoke with them earlier Kylie and Brendan and also back here is Taima now Taima her family is a refugee from Afghanistan and she explained to me earlier tell me one more time the significance of why having uh, an appropriate congressperson, according to you guys, in office right now? Well, um, I came here, at, I was five years old, as Afghan refugees. Um, and the, for the past two years, I've been very involved because I speak Farsi and I'm, you know, I've volunteered on campaigns, so I'm. Um, I know how to contact my, my members of Congress, senators, and I've been helping um, people try to get in contact with their um, the people in the military that they work with um, and the State Department. I had the. Um, the former congressman, Tom Swazi, had helped us get a couple of our, the interpreters into the U.S. Just last week, we had one interpreter come into the U.S. Um, after his um, uh, Navy veteran committed suicide and he wasn't able to um, get in contact with him. These members of Congress have functions and their constituents depend on them for many different things. Me personally, I have a, something that I depend on them for, and this is one is this: is I there are people that depend on them. Um, these interpreters are waiting overseas with their lives in limbo, yes. and I need my member of Congress to help me um, get their cases in front of the State Department and to advocate for me. Thank you. And, and you're also from Queens, so you're yeah. from this district as well. And that's just one story that I've heard. I've heard many throughout this journey to D.C. and will, of course, be stepping off in just minutes. And they will head to the congressman's office, also trying to speak to House Speaker McCarthy. And we will, of course, be there every step of the way, bringing you the latest from 4, 5, and 6.